Okay, welcome back. Mokadon is right is here and I am Mokadon. Tonight we have a really important video for you. We need to talk about how you're being surveilled. Government surveillance against you as well as surveillance against you by advertisers like Google, Microsoft, uh, Amazon. Did I forget to mention that Google is a CIA operation and so is Microsoft, a, a DOD operation? We're going to get into that. We're also going to tell you after this clip, we're going to tell you exactly what you should do if you don't want to be inconvenienced very much, but you want to have some good security that will reduce the spam you get, protect you from some unwanted malware, things like that. I am not sponsored by anybody. Nobody's paying me a dime. Nobody's asked me to do this because I'm just going to show you what I do. And then we're also going to talk about some things you can do if you really are willing to be inconvenienced or if you are actually a named target by one of the intelligence communities. If you're a named target, by the way, it doesn't matter. They're going to tap into your pipe going into your house. They're going to take all that data send it off, decrypt every bit of it. Doesn't matter what you use, you're going to get it. Um, they're going to find out what you're doing. Even if you use BitTorrent, won't matter. They're going to find out what you're doing because the CIA and NSA invented BitTorrent. They invented VPNs. They invented secure chat systems. We're going to hear uh, Tucker Carlson talk about how his signal, which is, an in, which is the most secure encrypted chat and voice communication system on the planet, how his signal, Tucker Carlson's signal, was cracked twice by the NSA and leaked to the New York Times. There's nothing you can do about it if you're a named specific target. But there's a lot you can do to keep them from sort of automatically sweeping you up into big databases. You can do a lot about that, and we're going to tell you what to do right after this clip. Enjoy. Our devices are uh, casting all of these records uh, that we do not see being created. Even if you can't see the content of these communications, the activity records, what the government calls metadata, which they argue they do not need a warrant to collect, um, tells the whole story. And these activity records are being created and shared and collected and intercepted constantly by companies and governments. What they're selling is us. They're selling our future. They're selling our past. They are selling our history, our identity, and ultimately, they are stealing our power and making our stories work for them. These efforts are being directed by the U.S. government, which you pay for and at least theoretically own. It's your government. But they're stripping your rights at very high speed because we're on the cusp of a global war. And so you can expect censorship to increase dramatically. Google began as a DARPA grant uh, by Larry Page and Sergey Brin when they were Stanford PhDs. And they, they got their funding as part of a joint CIA-NSA program to chart how, quote, birds of a feather flock together online through search engine aggregation. And then one year later, they launched Google and then became a military contractor quickly. Thereafter, they got Google Maps by purchasing a CIA satellite software, essentially. And all of the internet free speech technology was initially created by our national security state. VPNs, virtual private networks to hide your, your IP address. Tour, the dark web, to be able to buy and trail, uh, sell goods anonymously, end-to-end -end encrypted chats. All of these things were created initially as DARPA projects or as joint CIA-NSA projects. In 2014, after the coup in Ukraine, uh, and when the hearts and minds of the people of Crimea voted uh, to join the Russian Federation, that was the last straw for the concept of free speech on the internet in the eyes of NATO. In 2021, the NSA broke into my private text apps and read them and then leaked them to the New York Times against me. That just happened again to me last week. Um, and I'm wondering how common that is for the intel agencies to work with so-called mainstream media like the New York Times to hurt their opponents. Well, that is the function of these interstitial government-funded non-governmental organizations. It's spying and lying. Spying and lying. That's what our government, this federal government, has been doing for a long time, and it's come 
front and center to the American people in astounding and breathtaking horror over the last seven or eight years. In a report issued uh, declassified in August of 2021, the Director of National Intelligence stated, quote, FBI personnel conducted multiple queries of an individual who had the same last name as FBI personnel conducting the query. And on further investigation, what they learned was that this uh, query was made after this uh, analyst at the FBI had a conversation with his own mother, and his mother expressed suspicions about his father having an affair, cheating, uh, having an affair with another woman. They looked into it, and the, the, this particular analyst admitted that he ran the queries because of this tip from his mother that his dad was having an affair. The example not that I've given you is abuse. I assume you would uh, not disagree with that. Now, the September 2023 PCLOB report disclosed two additional intentional incidents. Two analysts conducted queries seeking information about a person who was a potential tenant of a rental property owned by one of the analysts. And another instance from 2022 in which an NSA analyst conducted queries on two occasions seeking information about two individuals that the analyst himself had met through an online dating service. Now, in an April 2022 opinion, the, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court noted the following searches of Americans' communications. 19,000 donors to a particular congressional campaign, 133 Americans participating in civil unrest and protests uh, in the summer of 2020, and um, Americans who were in the vicinity of the Capitol, uh, not necessarily inside the Capitol, but in the vicinity of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. The DNI's semi-annual assessment of Section 702 disclosed illegal queries conducted in 2019 to 2020, quote, using only the name of a U.S. congressman. The FISA court disclosed two particularly egregious searches from 2022. In June of 2022, an analyst conducted four queries of 702 information using the last names of a U.S. senator and of a state senator without further limitation. On October 25th, 2020, 2022, a staff operations specialist ran a query using the social security number of a state judge who had, quote, complained to FBI about alleged civil rights violations perpetrated by a municipal chief of police, close quote. All involved conduct that occurred before the reforms that before we put in reform. place. You're, before the reforms you put in place, reforms, the text of which we don't even have access to. Reforms that you've put in place. I've been on this committee for 13 years. During the entirety of those 13 years, I've expressed concerns to FBI directors appointed by presidents of both political parties and three different presidential administrations. Every darn one of them has told me the same thing. Don't worry about it. We've got this taken care of. We've got new procedures. It's going to be different now. It's never different. You haven't changed. And you keep referring to these policies, these new procedures. We haven't seen that. We're not even allowed to have access to it. And we have absolutely no reason to trust you because you haven't behaved in a manner that's trustworthy. You can't even, as we sit here, tell me that people who intentionally, knowingly, deliberately violated the civil rights of American citizens, that, that they were fired, or that they had their security clearance stripped. Now, in 2022, FBI and other agencies searched Americans' communications over 200,000 times, only 16 of which were evidence of a crime-only searches that returned information were the three related batch queries consisting of over, over 23,000 separate queries relating to the events of January 6th, were those evidence of a crime only queries, yes or no? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. The answer, what is, I can't, what, the answer is no, I, what I do I, know the answer. The answer what, is no. Were there 141 okay. I, queries for the activists arrested in connection with the uh, George Floyd protests uh, here in Washington, D.C., evidence of a crime only queries? Those were non-compliant queries, uh, and again, they all predate the reforms that we've put in place, which, which before echo we... Which other reforms that ever, other FBI directors which, have told me about to, every darn year. If How I about may... about 19,000 donors to a political campaign? The answer there is no. What about the query for a sitting member of Congress? The answer there is no. What about the query involving a U.S. senator, which for all we know could be any one of us? The answer is no. And so what, what does that tell me? Well, what I'm hearing and what these data points all point to is that a warrant requirement or prohibition relating to, quote unquote, evidence of a crime only queries would not have been uh, something that would have prevented any of the most egregious examples of the abuse that we've seen under Section 702. So 
the FBI is already required to obtain a court order in some circumstances before accessing the contents of Americans' communications in the context of 702. They're already required for that in some circumstances. Since 2018, how many times has that requirement been triggered according to government reporting? Do you know? I think it, I think there've been two instances where I think is maybe the number. 100, 103, yeah. 103 times yeah. it's been triggered. And out of those 103 identified times, uh, the FBI should have obtained a court order. How many times did the FBI actually obtain one? Do you know? But that I think the answer is none. Zero. So you're telling me that the FBI has completely ignored the limited court order requirement that it's already subjected to. You have the audacity to come here and you told us that getting, uh, adding a warrant requirement to 702, even for queries involving U.S. persons on U.S. soil, that that would amount to some sort of unilateral disarmament. That, you have a lot of gall, sir. This is disgraceful. The Fourth Amendment requires more than that, and you know it. I know every single time for centuries, even prior to the founding of this country, there were similar protections built into the laws of the United Kingdom before we became a country. Even then, the government was making the same darn argument you're making today, which is, it's too hard. This would make it hard for the government. It's why we have a constitution, sir, and you must comply with it. Every court to have looked at it has found it to be constitutional. Well, and last point. How lucky last for you, point. because no one has standing to do that. No one knows when they're being surveilled. Yeah, th that is not an argument, last sir. There is nothing that you have done that is not entirely within the FBI's control and supervision. You're asking me to believe something that is not believable because your, your agency has made it unbelievable, and I refuse to accept it. It's been going on a lot longer than that, but the American people are really aware of it now. There's just a few things that we have to do when we take the oath, uphold and defend the Constitution, and in the Constitution is enshrined the right to privacy and the Fourth Amendment. It's right there. Yet in this, in the, in this chamber, in, the, in these halls, we have members, elected members, instead of upholding their oath to defend the Constitution, actively trying to subvert the Constitution, spying and lying. Tell me where there's been any accountability. The American people demand it. And yet we stand on the precipice after all of this, after watching a president from the party that's now in control in the House of the majority party in this in this body, the president of the United States was spied on and then impeached based on falsified information. I, I don't know how more breathtaking it can, can be. And if they can't abide getting a warrant and probable cause to go after American citizens, quite honestly, they shouldn't be serving in this body at all. Once again, the government has created the problem. The American people aren't the ones to be punished for the solution. It is our number one duty. It is our number one duty to stand in support of the Constitution and the rights of every, every American citizen that are enshrined in that document. That's right. It is the duty of Congress to protect our rights. And as you can see, Senator Mike Lee, who is a pretty solid conservative, he's a potential future appointee to the United States Supreme Court. He's a pretty solid guy, and he gets nowhere, nowhere with the FBI. Uh, the Freedom Caucus and the, the Freedom Caucus chairman there, whose name escapes me, they rage about it. But, you know, the Democrats don't care. They don't care about your constitutional rights, and the rhinos don't care about your rights either. So let's talk for a minute about, about what you can do and, and what you can't do. And I'll tell you what I do. So basically, you're one of two people. You're either... 99.999% of the population, you are a law-abiding citizen. You just don't want to be snooped on. You would prefer the government not be able to automatically, through this sort of robotic, automated methods, collect your data. Uh, you would prefer that Google and Microsoft not be able to sell as much data on you. If that's the group you're in, you're like me. And uh, there's a number of things you can do, and I'm going to go over those right now. But first, let me talk briefly about this the second group. Uh, if you're the Proud Boys, if you are a named target, if the FBI knows your name or the NSA knows your name, 
and you are targeted specifically, there is almost nothing you can do. In that clip, you heard Tucker Carlson talk about how his uh, text software was hacked twice. That secure software of Tucker's that was hacked is Signal. And most of you are familiar with Signal. It's encrypted chat, encrypted voice, encrypted video. You can have, uh, to a limited extent, encrypted group meetings on there. Uh, Signal is, is very secure if you are not one of those targeted people. Tucker was targeted, and, it, and even though he changes phones every three months, and he prefers Apple over Android, and he has VPN, and he uses Signal, it doesn't matter. They, they're going to get it. There, there is no way if you are individually targeted that they can't get your stuff. But if you're like those of us who are not individually targeted, we're just being swept up with the automated collection process. Here's what I do, and here's what I suggest you do. Um, I run a Microsoft computer. I have an Android phone. I'm actually shooting this video on my Android phone in 4K. I love Android phones. Maybe Apple's better. I don't know, but Apple is just as vulnerable. For me, what I do is I run Proton VPN on all my individual devices. I have AT&T U-verse fiber coming into the house goes through the regular AT&T U-verse Wi-Fi, but each of my individual devices runs an application that is Proton VPN. Let me show you that real quick. So Proton VPN, they have a free version, but if you're gonna run it on all your devices, the free version isn't gonna work for you. You're gonna wanna pay for it. And it's pretty cheap. It's not the cheapest, but you know, you're, if you want something good, you're gonna pay for it. And I find it to be very good. I run it on my Fire TVs. I run it on the two Android phones and I run it on the two computers. So I got six of them up and I only have to pay once for up to 10 connections concurrently. It's very fast. Uh, maybe it's not the fastest, but I don't notice any slowdown and I'm moving gigabytes worth of data. Uh, you can test it out for free. One thing, you can you go to protonvpn.com and they don't pay me. They don't sponsor me. I'm getting nothing for this. I'm just sharing with you what I do. You can test it out for free. Proton, P-R-O-T-O-N, vpn.com. Grab the free thing, install it on your phone. If you want to get good speed enough to watch videos and things, and I get much more speed than that, but you're going to end up paying for it. I think I pay about $120 a year. They, they have a deal. They owe everybody in the VPN world has a deal going on. 64% off, huge savings on Proton VPN. Get the deal. The best deal going, I think, is the 30 month plan at $359 a month. You save $192. So, what's that? That's basically 36 bucks times three. It's $108 for 30 months. That's a pretty good deal. Get that. What that does, and what I've noticed out of that, it, it lets me avoid all of the spam. It comes with this NetShield uh, ad blocking software that blocks most of the ads. But what it really does that's important is it blocks the trackers. And for a while, I ran a demo on my phone to see how many trackers there were. I was getting tracked almost a thousand times in 10 minutes. So I was getting tracked a hundred times a minute. So that's the kind of tracking stuff going on. I highly recommend Proton VPN and I recommend you pay for it. What I like best that's free from Proton is I use their uh, Proton Mail. And if you type in protonmail.com or proton.me forward slash mail, they'll both take you to the same place. You can get free Proton Mail. And I use the free Proton Mail. I think the limit's something like 500 messages a month. But what it is, is it's end-to-end -end encrypted email. So some of the people being tortured who were on Trump's team, they had Proton Mail and they could not access their email. Proton is based in Switzerland. They have a high set of privacy laws there in Switzerland. 
But more important than that, the email is encrypted so that even Proton can't decrypt it. Even if they want to see your emails, even Proton can't see your emails. And that assumes from a Proton email to a Proton email. Once the email gets to the Proton server, it's encrypted and even Proton can't see it. Obviously, if it's coming from someone with a Gmail account, which I also have a Gmail account, Gmail is completely, everybody sees it. The FBI, CIA, they have open access to your Gmail account. Proton, they do not and cannot access. I don't pay for it because I don't use it for the day-to-day -day BS. I only use it, like, for example, I use it for this YouTube channel. If you email me, mokadon at proton.me, that is an encrypted email. It, no one sees it except you and me, and maybe if it was intercepted on your side before it got to the Proton server. If you're also using Proton Mail and you email me, it is, it is completely unhackable anywhere in between. No one can get it. No one can ever see it. Now, the exception for that is if you're a named targeted individual, in which case they are able to get it. That's because they will spend the money and the time they're looking at you individually. They can, de you know, they can crack any encryption, and they will. As long as you're just not being swept up in the day-to-day -day BS, then, then basically, if you're just a normal person, they're never, they're not going to go to that trouble. It's just going to, you're just going to have a whole lot less data for them to look at should they choose to look at you. And that's, a, that's how you want to be. That's a good thing. Same thing applies to Google. Same thing applies to Microsoft, the Chinese government, anyone who wants to just kind of look at you casually, they don't see nearly as much because all your web traffic is hidden. It's in, in the Proton VPN. I use the, the DuckDuckGo browser. I highly recommend that. It doesn't store your cache. You can have a very secure world with just the DuckDuckGo browser, the um, Proton VPN, which you should pay for, and the free Proton Mail. And by the way, they'll also give you a Proton Drive, like which is sort of like my drive, where you can store files. You don't get as much capacity. I think the free one gives you five or 10 gigabytes, something like that. And you get a free Proton Calendar where that's also encrypted and hosted at Proton, and even they can't see it. So, so by doing that, what I've noticed is I get a lot less spam. I get very, very little spam. I continue to use Google Chrome for most of my business use. I use Google Chrome for most of my casual browsing. You know, I have my privacy settings turned up, but that doesn't matter. Google is, you know, CIA and SA. So whatever. Google Chrome, they can see it. I use Gmail for most of my stuff. All my banking stuff's on Gmail because guess what? Gmail, um, the bank's, are also in bed with the government. They're regulated by the government. They, they hand over whatever financial information the government wants. I also happen to have securities licenses and NMLS licenses. And so I'm an open book to the government anyway. I have an NFA trust, right? It's not like I'm trying to hide my weapons. I have a National Firearms Act trust that I hold my NFA weapons in, uh, mostly suppressors. There you go. If you're targeted, if you're one of the targeted individuals, you can install graphene on it on your Google Pixel phone. The graphene operating system is highly secure. It'll sandbox the Google apps, but you should probably not install them anyway. Uh, there are some open source secure apps to do all those features, maps, calendar, email, etc. Put your Proton mail on there. <clears throat> Run your Proton VPN uh, at your at your residence, and then rather than just using the Proton VPN, the Proton VPN is compatible with BitTor. Tor for your, the younger folks, BitTor for us older guys. VPNs, Tor, BitTor, whatever you call it, secure chat, like these were all uh, developed by the CIA and the NSA. 
so that they could help rebel organizations overthrow unfriendly governments. Just like Google is CIA, NSA, DARPA creation, Microsoft government contractor creation, little Billy Gates was doing DOS for the military. The thing I'm trying to tell you is, as long as you're not specifically targeted, you can and should do a lot of things. It's cheap. What do we say? Three fifty nine a month for the the Proton VPN, free Proton email for any email you really don't want anyone to read. Uh, c- private communications between you and maybe you know somebody in a militia group, that kind of thing, or maybe you're a proud boy and you need to go full hog graphene OS, Proton everything, Bit Tor at the house. You can buy a router that'll natively handle BitTor and Proton. But but unless you're that guy, hey, you know, you don't need to use BitTor unless you're buying drugs or guns on the dark web. There's just no reason for a normal guy like me to use BitTor, so I don't. But I have the VPN because it cuts down on all my junk mail, keeps me much less monitored by Google, Microsoft, Amazon, the NSA, CIA, and that's and that's who they are anyway. And about ninety percent of my stuff is done through the old way everyone does Gmail, although that still runs through Proton VPN. So I mean, it's very hard to intercept my stuff. AT and T that does my internet has no idea what I do on the web because they can't see it. It's hidden by Proton VPN. They can't tell what sites I'm going to. Google, if I use Google Chrome, they can tell when I use Google Chrome, but if I use DuckDuckGo, then nobody can tell what sites I'm going to. If I do a search with Google, Google knows what I'm searching for, but if I do a search with DuckDuckGo, nobody knows what I'm searching for. So I can bifurcate my world if I have to. I don't really search for anything I'm that concerned about or do any of that stuff, but like some very private stuff like copies of my NFA trust and things like that. Well, those are on Proton. They're in the Proton drive. I, obviously, I have hard copies, but, you know, there's a, a little bit of a need everybody has for high security stuff. Use Proton for that. The email, the drive, the calendar is all free as long as you don't do more than about 500 messages a month. Pay for the VPN so you get the speedy VPN let you use 10 user accounts at the same time or 10 you can, you with your account can sign on to 10 different devices and keep them signed on my house that's two TVs two cell phones two computers i don't know too many people who have a lot more going on than that maybe your kids but i don't know that your kids care about vpn um but my wife and i we have two computers we have two cell phones and we have two fire stick TVs and those are tapped straight into proton VPN has a good fire stick app. All right. That's it for this talk. I tried to hit the highlights and tell you what you could do. I hope it helped you. Please like comment and subscribe and God bless, but we need you to subscribe. Please do me the favor, subscribe to this video. I need you to subscribe. because That's the biggest thing about YouTube and the algorithm is number of subscribers. I just am a new channel. So I have very few Help me out and subscribe. I appreciate it. And you have a fantastic day.